Now, the referendum campaign isn't just making headlines in Britain. African nations are watching the polls closely, with the UK one of the leading European destinations for African capital and labor. There is also growing concern in Africa about tax avoidance schemes by EU and US multinational companies, which are said to be costing African countries billions of dollars a year, according to a report by the African Union. Well, our guest today focuses on European Union Union policy from the African political and business perspective in Brussels. Uzo Madu is normally based in Brussels, but we're delighted to say that she joins us today in our London studio. Thank you very much indeed Thank for you. coming in. How might African countries be affected by Britain staying in or getting out of the EU? I mean, are they paying attention to this swirling debate at all? Uh, well, they are, but I think actually um, people that are being more vocal are mm. Africans living in Britain. And one of the key arguments that we see is uh, immigration. They say that actually Commonwealth countries are discriminated against compared to EU, country, EU nationals mm. coming into Britain. And this is the case. However, we need to look at UK's recent Home Office policy on immigration that actually right. says if you're a non-EU citizen and you're earning below £35,000 that you could face deportation. So that doesn't really sound like, to me, the mm. UK would be uh, very migration friendly. Yes, I can see how people would be watching that keenly. But the other issue, of mm. course, for Africa is tackling illicit financial flows in Africa, um, which includes tax avoidance mm. by allegedly Western companies. What sort of platform has the EU provided to tackle that challenge? Well, they've actually set out a tax avoidance, anti-tax avoidance package with several measures, including supporting um, developing countries on a whole mm. um, with their fiscal administrations. This is very important because we know that actually only three African countries are really equipped to deal with the most common uh, tax avoidance problems that there are. But also the measures lay out legal rules which mean that uh, foreign income coming into the EU member states mm. will now be taxed instead of being exempted. And this was a very, very big problem um, in many member states including the UK mm. where this was able to happen. Just to be clear, what we are talking about are essentially illegal transfers from African countries, which have apparently tripled since 2001 to something like $50 billion. And essentially, these are governments and multinational companies allegedly engaging in fraudulent schemes aimed at avoiding tax payments to these very poor countries. Exactly. And, you know, some of them are transfer pricing activities. So that's when multinational companies actually um, do transactions between themselves at a lower price mm. in order to avoid tax. But some of them, um, in essence, are on the verge of being legal. And these are secret contracts between multinational corporations and governments to avoid tax. Mm. We know this happens on 69% in African countries. So 69% of African countries are giving multinational companies tax breaks. So That's this a is staggering a very, figure. Very, very but of course, the point. other big facilitator of these illicit outflows are the corrupt practices in Africa itself. Yes, exactly. And this is very much a problem. And I think this really needs to be tackled at the root. Um, looking to EU measures to do this is something mm. that is way beyond its remit. Uzo, thank you very much thank indeed. Uzo Madhu there from Brussels, joining us in our London studio.